Hi, my name is Phil Priestley. And I'm a former police officer and I work for the Anglia Learning Trust providing help, support, advice and guidance on a number of issues that help to keep young people safe. Today, I want to offer you this short video to talk about online safety and online behaviour. Sometimes these things are called parental controls. I'm going to give you some key pointers and while this video won't be everything that you could possibly know on the subject, hopefully it will provoke thought and discussion on a key topic. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to a significant increase in screen time for a lot of our young people. With social activities, sports and general interest groups being closed down due to lockdowns and safety measures, many are simply spending more time online in computer games or in social media environments. For many parents, these are unfamiliar waters. So the question is, how do I keep my child safe online? First of all, let's split the systems of controls that you might choose to adopt between online controls and offline or physical controls. Before we talk about the gadgetry of internet tools, why don't we talk about some of the more simple steps that we can all take as parents? Offline controls. When I talk about offline controls, I'm talking about the things you can do in your house, in your home, and through physical boundary setting to keep your child safe. Where does your child play video games? While playing games in the privacy of a bedroom can be okay, be mindful that games consoles all offer a full portal to the internet, to video sharing, and to voice over internet services. So, while they are in their bedrooms online playing PlayStation Network or Xbox Live Gold, they can contact and speak to anyone. If you do want them to have their console in their bedroom, I'd recommend that the bedroom door stays open. Additionally, do you look at their friends list? Sit down with them and ask them to tell you who's in their contacts list. Also, think about the games they're playing. Look at the Peggy ratings play the games for yourself. You might be of the opinion that the age rating is a vague guide. Current technology brings graphic violence and adult content to the forefront of a lot of titles. Did you know that there's a strip club in the latest version of Grand Theft Auto? If you wouldn't allow your child to go to a real strip club, you probably wouldn't want them playing this title either. Having your games console in the living room might sound like a nightmare, but it does help to regulate the screen time. You will very quickly realize how long they play, what they're playing, and how they talk to their friends and strangers online. Having the console connected to a screen that faces into a room that is used by lots of people definitely has a way of preventing access to the worst that the internet can offer. Likewise, consider their schedule and routine. As with fast food, the internet is a wonderful treat, but it should be consumed in moderation. This includes mobile phone and social media time too. Left unobserved, they will check that mobile phone a number of times per minute. Social media providers measure their success on how compelling their product is, and compelling is just another word for addictive. Jack Dorsey, the chief executive of Twitter, admitted to Congress in the United States very recently that in his opinion, social media is an addictive product. It's incredibly rare that we sell addictive products to children, unheard of in fact. Perhaps it is even more unheard of for parents to become the supplier. Physically, a child should have a time in the evening beyond which they're not allowed to access the internet. Medical professionals recommend that children should have at least an hour without the stimulation of the internet immediately before they go to bed. Children should not be allowed to take phones, screens, tablets or laptop devices to bed with them at night. And you should consider having a hand in time of an evening where all of the devices are given over. Finally, Spend time with your children online and talk to them about their internet use. Play the games that they play. Have fun together using the internet. 
develop the type of trust and rapport with each other online that means that they will come and talk to you when they see something they don't like or that makes them feel unsafe online. Taking basic steps like these will immediately increase your child's safety and boost their health and well-being. Online controls. Online controls are a nightmare for some parents. If you feel that your son or daughter is more fluent online than you are, you might actually feel a bit intimidated and even outgunned. You don't need to have this anxiety. Three great products that I really think help are Custodio, the Google Family Link, and the Microsoft Family Safety app. I'll put links to all of those at the end of the video. All of these products are written to be accessible and easy to use. You don't need to have a degree in computer science and you don't need to be more internet savvy than your child. Common features include age boundaries so that a barrier intervenes to stop, for example, your 12 year old from accessing content designed for people over the age of 18. Live reports that tell you with alerts to your mobile phone which websites they're visiting and who they're contacting. And you can even have GPRS based tracking on their phones. Whilst this last feature might seem like quite a severe intrusion, when you think about it, it's incredibly valuable. As parents, it's our responsibility to know where our children are at all times. They're commonly now carrying devices that can quickly and easily tell us or even notify us. But a number of parents either don't know how to enable this technology or feel that there is a moral boundary that they don't want to cross. Whenever I'm addressing this subject, I always make this one point very clearly. Your child's mobile phone is not their personal diary. It's not their confidential space. If we allow our children to hold a mobile phone or internet enabled device as a confidential space, we are putting them at risk. The phone belongs to you. They are not 18. You are the bill payer. Additionally, and this is equally important for everyone to understand and accept, our duty of care does not end when they step online. Actually, it increases. No child can self-regulate their appetite for the internet, for social media environments, or for computer games. And this is a very important matter that we must accept. Many of the parental control products do allow you to check their messages, look at their downloads, inspect their photographs, and see who they most regularly get in touch with. And all of these things are essential. So to keep your child safe online, it might help you to think about these six key fundamental questions. And if you don't know the answers, you might think about how you're going to find them out. How? How many internet devices do they have? And how do they access the internet? Is it through a laptop, through their consoles, through tablets, mobile phones? Where? When they access the internet, where are they usually? When? What time of the day do they access the internet? And how long do they go online for? Why? When they go online, what are they consuming? And what are they looking for? Who? Looking at their friends list on a games console and social media account, who are they friends with? Do you know them? Are you comfortable with these people playing a part in your son or daughter's life? Are any of the people strangers? What? What positive steps are you taking to ensure that your children are safe online from the harms associated with consuming age inappropriate content, including graphic violence and pornography? Giving thought to child sexual exploitation, criminal exploitation, harassment and bullying. What boundaries have we put in place for our children to help to keep them safe? If you can genuinely answer these six key fundamental questions, you have already reduced the risk of something negative happening online. 
None of us can afford to operate with complacency towards this issue. And there will ever be a time when the internet or using the internet is free of risk.